Welcome everybody to the Polite Political Discourse. My name is Tyler Overby and I'm here with Dakota Coddington and we have a guest on our show tonight. His name is Andrew Coviello and we are here at Roberto's Mexican Food down off the North Coast Highway. And uh, the topic that we're going to ha- be talking about today is student expression. And uh, usually this is the, par- the point when Dakota and I go off into our established points, but we figured because we haven't had a guest before that we would like to give him a moment to just take the take the reins for a little bit and then we'll play off of him and just talk for a little bit and just see what happens. So uh, Andrew, whenever you'd like to start, we're talking about student expression in schools, uh, whenever you're ready. Thanks for opening up for me, Tyler. I've been meaning to talk about this for a very long time and forgive me viewers if I stammer because there might be some stammering. I'm never usually good under pressure and I don't think very many people are. There will be very little side talking as much as there is staying on the topic. I won't go off on any tangents like I'm trying to do right now. I'm not. No more tangents. Okay. So student expression, it's actually not as hard as the ASB student body and administration officials want you to think it is. No. It's very simple. In fact, I could explain to you in under 30 minutes, but we might go a little over. So I'm going to explain to you right now. Student expression, right, is how students express themselves. It's the literal definition, and it goes beyond that in so many diverse ways and patterns that people have trouble putting fences on that. The truth is, you need to not put a fence on it. There is nothing really that can be done about student expression except to limit the boundaries of physical property. That being said, when I say physical property, I mean that the actual law beyond student expression must not be violated in terms of the destruction of public property, (laughs) etc. There are other topics I will be covering due to student expression being so intertwined with these conversations and topics. I won't be able to list them all tonight since I am just a guest and I probably won't have that much time. But I will try to get to some simple sounding topics which might entrance you as a viewer and I hope to keep you listening for the duration of the live video. Anyways, I'll start off with the most basic and probably the most controversial aspect of student expression which is freedom of speech. Freedom of speech comes in the constitution as a basic right that tells you you can say whatever you want and nobody can police you for it. The government, maybe, but that is different. The government actually can't do much to stop you from expressing yourself as a student, and neither can ASB, nor can administration. In fact, they've been doing it wrong for a very, very long time. I've been here since 2015, and I only noticed what they were doing 2016 era. That was honestly a little bit disturbing to me not much disturbing also a bit infuriating because I actually felt some personal ties to the way they were um, the way they were handling things I felt some personal ties because in all honesty it didn't feel right it never has felt right it's not running the way it should and there needs to be some sort of change administratively or in the student body that you know accommodates the incredible wide range of expression that we as a student body have so, when you say, like, they, they, the ASB and the, the school government have limited your freedom of speech, what do you mean by that exactly? Like, well, the illusion is that you can't say swear words. I know perfectly well that you can. Second of all, no wrong think opinions, which is basically if you're moderately conservative or far right, or if you use a racial gender biased or ethnic slur you can't you can actually legally say anything you want you can invent secret languages at school you can use the dirtiest nastiest slur that you want and guess what if you use those dirty nasty slurs and you end up with no friends that's a social problem not a governmental problem lawfully legally the government cannot interfere with anything you say or display using your student expression. Well, I don't really, I mean, I think it's really a matter of the 
you can say whatever you want at the school. I don't really think that's what the the debate is towards. I mean, yes, you can say anything. I think, in, just for the sake of differing, my stance would be that you shouldn't... There's some things that you just shouldn't say, and I'm not saying anything in particular, but I would just say that at least when you mentioned like the, the slurs or anything that's derogatory towards another group at school, I'd say that the, the administration has an ability to be able to intervene solely because I think that bullying is too far of a problem and too far of an issue in this country not to be addressed in some way, and I think that the little that they do to be able to try to curtail that by stopping somebody when they say something really rude towards a group and degrade them, I think that's permissible. But I understand exactly where you're coming from. I think that within reason, everyone has a right to be able to say anything. Um, in my personal opinion, as long as you're not directly targeting another group for something as a skin color difference or anything that's not inherently different, uh, I think that that's not okay, but anything other than that is your ability because of the Constitution, and I think that that protects it. Well, well, well. Let me tell you why I think that that one exception is, in fact, erroneous. I think that when you went to the cover topic of bullying, you confused the oral aspect and the audio aspect with the physical aspect of bullying. What I will tolerate is naysaying, name slinging, mud slinging. Anything like that is okay with me because I can ignore it and walk away. And nobody can tell me, you can't do that. Oh, go to the counselor or pull me aside because I walk away from a bully. When he shoves me, that's when things get personal. Now, me, I have one or two years of mixed martial arts and boxing <clears throat> training. I'm a white belt with a couple of stripes on my way to being the next level. And although that doesn't seem like much, I'm actually very capable. And as such, I can deal with a bully who's physical in any way that involves three prompts. That being said, physical bullying is the only aspect that should be taken care of, and it has been pretty well. I never see a fight at school. I never see a physical altercation. And when you physically altercate someone to infringe on their student expression, in fact, that is a violation of student expression. That is something you should get in trouble for. Do not physically altercate somebody else's student expression. Do not hit or punch someone at a controversial politic rally. Do not infringe on other people's expressions by using physical force. And do not, of course, this is a message directed to the administration, do not infringe upon the whole breadth of a student's expressionistic rights. That is what I believe in, my dying heart, I will defend this to the grave. You should not physically altercate someone because they're using student expression. Now, on to the examples of student expression. I also think that sign making constitutes as free speech and student expression. Also, with sign making, it's a very fickle thing. I mean, of course, it goes back to my free speech topic where you, say, where you can say whatever you want. You can write in on a sign, too. That's basically the gist of what I'm getting at. You can write whatever you want on a sign. You can present it. Nobody can stop you from doing that. From holding up a sign, that is the only physical act that is deemed expressionistic under student expressions. And this is all correct. This is all cited, searched, resourced. It's been proven. There are court cases dedicated to student expression, and the things that I'm saying are based on some of those court cases and the facts of our Constitution, which you were referring to. Would you like to transition, either of you? Um, I would just say before we transition, because I do <coughs> want to bring up maybe some of the important court cases that go into the First Amendment, just for the sake of having that reference. Mr. Bloomquist would be very happy for that. <laughs> um, but I would just say uh, my only thing, uh, because just to go back to the bullying thing for a little bit, and then we'll go move on, um, I just think that maybe the, the definition of bullying uh, for you may be different for some of the students at the school solely because I think that because you mentioned that it was the physical attacking of someone that could be considered bullying and that you don't see it a lot at school and I think that that's true but that's only a very tip of the iceberg for a lot of people I think a lot of and especially for what we were talking about freedom of speech I think a lot of it is those uh, 
snide remarks that people say that just kind of like attack someone's self-esteem or their ego uh, incessantly and pointlessly. Uh, and I think that that happens a lot in high school, especially because people are so insecure and the only way that they feel better about themselves is by bringing other people down. Trust me, I see that every day at school. And that's just because that's the way people are, so I don't really hold it against anybody. But I just say that, like, I think it's important to acknowledge, like, the way that people can be harmed verbally because I think that there are some things that, like, people can say at school, like you said, are very protected by the Constitution, but just because it's legal doesn't make it morally acceptable. And I think that, like, some people just... I'm not saying that you should, like... I'm not trying to establish a stance of censor this, censor that, but, like, if you're trying to hurt somebody, then maybe you should just think before you talk. That's the only thing that I'm going to say. Right. Well, there's a counterculture here. We often see it portrayed in media that bullies should be left to their victims. And that's oftentimes true. Oftentimes, we leave bullies to their victims, even if that's in fictional media. Nobody really stands up for the little guy because they don't want to be under the fist of this big brutish guy this jock who works on the football team oh and by the way Sage Creek doesn't have a football team (laughs) I think the problem like if you want to talk about issues with the administrative rules I think a rule that needs to be revised at our school is the fact that the idea that that, that a, a teacher must witness someone either saying something mean to somebody or being physical with someone in order to give them any uh, trouble. I understand that there's some like legal issues for, for that reason, and I understand why that might be in place for that very particular reason, but I think you should at least try to curtail that because I think that the, the value in the word of an innocent person, and I know that that's a gray area when you're trying to figure out who's innocent, but like if someone's clearly, clearly, visibly hurt and harmed by somebody, especially if they have enough witnesses to say that this has been happening and that there's other people involved that are looking out for me and seeing that I'm being hurt, those four or five voices should be able to trump the one. Mm, I I'd, like hearing that. Were you going to say something? I'd, I'd, I'd be cautious of that, though, because... I've known some really good actors throughout my life, and I've known some people that know how to shed crocodile tears That's really true. well. Freshman and they, girls. And they, yeah. And <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> and, yeah, well, and they're able to, thank you, uh, they're able to uh, get their friends to rally around to, in another sense, to pick on some kid and get them in trouble. So I, I'd be careful with, yeah. with the aspect of just verbally saying like hey this kid said that to me because well, and I understand I've heard that our schools I'm not saying it's true but I've heard that our schools had a history of playing favorites and so like if they might trust the integrity of one person's value over another and I'm not saying that that might not necessarily happen but I think that for the most part that they're not dumb and I think that they could see that like if there's like I said a multitude of people they're generally saying, hey, I just want to address this because I'm generally concerned about the way that someone's speaking to another person. I think that's valuable. I, I think that they'll definitely investigate it at the very least, right? Okay. Yeah, that's right. Because that's the only right thing to do is investigate. Exactly. It's, and that's not infringing on anybody's rights to ask questions, right? Yeah. That's just as much of their right as it is yours. The only thing that infringes upon a person's right is to make decisions based on those questions. What I see is an ideal system, and I'm great with coming up with ideas because... I'm a very bright mind. Other people have told me this before, mostly adults, but I acknowledge it myself, post their comments and compliments. So my system is exactly what you were saying. <clears throat> and you and you told me there was a reach with that. Girls who play crocodile tears, this isn't <laughs> true, you know. We we never know. Actors, <laughs> I get I get where you got that from. Where actors go and play crocodile tears, yeah. and there are a few guilty ones who come out. And <clears throat> What I was thinking is I would have real eyewitnesses come to the scene, you know, about four or five. That law definitely needs to be revised because it's always been a problem. Elementary school, middle school, whenever a fight breaks out, it's usually the guy's, you know, his gang, his gal, he, his, um, I forgot what his it's called. His group. Posse. His gaggle of geese. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, dude, like, honestly, like, we could do a poll <coughs> on the, the Sage website and ask, like, how is bullying still a problem and is and the administration doing an effective job of handling it? And people are going to almost 100% say, hell no. Because, you, as I told you, so much of it is not physical and so much of it behind closed doors that 
no one's gonna be able to do anything about it if they don't if oh a teacher must witness it bs someone's gonna ever have the balls to say something in front of a teacher like that like the only time that it ever happens is whenever people are walking by in the hallways or after school or over texts like it's never directly when someone's watching because they are smarter than that <clears throat> we're at sage creek we're pretty smart you know we are smart kids we're actually raised homegrown smart kids and I kind of want to keep going, but forgive me. Do you want to transition into the court cases? I mean, the court cases, I haven't found any yet, but I know that there are some out here. Oh, there's, uh, we can throw some out there from AP Gov. I got you. You want to talk about uh, Tinker versus Des Moines? Tinker versus Des Moines is one of my favorites, and it's one I've cited before. Go ahead and open up about that. All right. So, okay, we're going to shoot back to, uh, I think it was 1968, during the uh, Vietnam War here in this country. Basically, uh... We, there were some students, I think there were multiple of the Tinker family, and there was one person that was a friend, I think. Uh, they decided that they wanted to uh, symbolically show their uh, opposition to the Vietnam War by wearing a black armband around their arm. And there was actually a school rule posted uh, at the school board saying that uh, do not do this, and if you do it, then there will be consequences. And they still did it. They got in trouble. They went to the Supreme Court. Or they originally, they ruled against the, the students, but then they appealed it, and then they ruled in favor of the students, uh, securing the right, the symbolic freedom of expression and free speech. Mm. And I think that that's great uh, because I think it allows a very basic principle. But I think that when we talk about it, especially in correlation with the the Poway case, uh, do you are you familiar with the Poway case? Poway Andrew? case, no. I was mainly looking at something Joiner versus because that was when I went on. Um the wiki and I actually found a few on expression. Well, I think the Poway case is something that you are going to have a lot to talk about. I th if you don't know what it is, the Poway case basically there was somebody uh, at a school, there was a school where they had a day of silence for homosexuality people that were not, feel, felt people that uh, ho homosexuality people, people that were homosexual that felt underrepresented and never had a voice and then people didn't talk for the whole day. And then they had a, a response to that by having like a straight day. Is that Harper v. Poway? Uh, yes, that is Harper v. Poway. Okay, I'm looking at it on Prezi right now. Yes, and so the person in question, he <clears throat> wore a shirt, jacket, either one, doesn't really matter, and it had a Bible verse that said homosexuality is shameful. It said other things, but that's the gist of what you need to, of what was the target. Homosexuality is shameful, but it had a quote from Romans, I don't remember, some Bible verse. And uh, instead of suspending him, instead of getting him in any trouble, because they knew that this kid was going to try to... He was, he was a shit raker, for the lack of another better word. Uh, he was just trying, he knew that he was doing, he was doing this to try to see if they were going to throw him out of school. And um, he brought him into school, didn't arrest him. The principal said, hey, let me work with you. What can I do so we can solve this problem? Like, are you aware that like this is being, this is affecting some people in a wrong way, blah, 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 blah. At the end of the day, he just stayed at the school all day and then he went home. And then I think he wore the shirt again and then he did get in trouble or something or... Basically, he didn't actually get suspended, but he got in trouble in some way, some sort, and he went to the, the, to the courts to try to see if it would be dished out. What do you think about that? Right, well, let me give it to you in a complete scenario that revolves around all students' perspectives as administration as well. I will give that to you. Right, so basically, what you're doing is you've got a guy, he's wearing a homosexuality sinful t-shirt, so there are rules to that, and this is the ideal and actually correct way that people respond to this. They should respond to it this way, but obviously that doesn't happen all the time. So you see a shirt like that. Some guy's wearing it. Yeah, he looks douchey. Yeah, he's looking for attention, responses. Word choice. This is a school uh, Yeah, I know. Just, just keep going. But, you know, the, the thing you can't do with him, you can't fight him. You can't punch him in the face. You can't say oh yeah physical justice yeah i'm punching you in the nose don't wear that shirt to school again because that creates a harmful environment and a non-expressionistic environment i know you'd really like to you'd really like to beat that guy in his smug face because it's satisfying but you can't not legally and all you can do is just not be his friend anymore show him what inclusivity and solitude looks like in social you just can't be friends with him anymore if he keeps doing that. I mean, if the principal pulls him aside in a friendly way, like, hey, bro, I'm your dude, friend, pal, chum. How can we <laughs> solve this problem? Right? That is not infringing on somebody's rights. That is not 
a step down of authority and a talking down or condescending. That was very all. helpful. He was trying to help everyone involved. Yeah, that's right. He was being very therapeutic when he talked to this guy. Now, I thought that they'd gotten the situation settled with, but it appears since he came back with the shirt on again and got in trouble, like he didn't learn his lesson and he wasn't able to solve the problem. So what I would have done is go plan B, inclusivity. Don't do anything about it because he's not learning. Just don't be his friend anymore. <laughs> Show him what it's like. And then when he decides to stop wearing the shirt and he looks lonely at the lunch table, you go, you go come and join him, right? And maybe assign him the therapist to see how he's doing. Maybe elbow it in on him. Hey, maybe you shouldn't have done that. I'm so glad that you had brought up, though, the... Uh the if you had worn that shirt you could probably get beat up thing because i think that that line is when we talked about an ap gov is the the inevitable uh rule that that gets played in is that if you wear something that incites violence the school has slight discretion to be able to to investigate or intervene because you don't want to be able to have any fist fights going on in school everyone especially in the administration just wants to keep people safe no one wants to get anybody hurt so I think that for for the sake of the Poway case, dude, like obviously they they should they had every right to talk to this kid. Let alone they should have could have suspended him because he came back after they talked to him. Like, dude, you're inciting violence. You're making people mad. Like, of course, it's like being going in just as a neo Nazi or something. Like, you have your opinions, and it doesn't mean that they're not valid. But just don't incite violence. Right. And I, that's the line. I actually get where you're putting that. That actually defines the gray area very well. You say inciting violence. That's a key phrase. When you say inciting violence, then that is where something physical happens. When something physical happens, the government has to take action, but that is the borderline. I know throughout my career, I have never done something physical in the name of expressionism. I've only gone out here, you know, make my voice loud. I've only walked and I have done nothing to make other people feel as if though they were physically hurt however if there are people out here who do have problems with what i say and in terms of coercion feel as if though i should be stopped well that's too bad because one the administration can't do anything about what i say and two you need to get over it my friend i want to be your friend but if we can't talk it out <coughs> like adults and you just have to resort to being petty and calling on big brother for your insecurities and I, I harsh that, I, I word that so harshly because, yeah, we live in a harsh society. So uh, things don't always come with a grain of salt or a spoonful of sugar. I just have to say, grow a spine. I mean, not even offensively. I'm just asking you, are you really going to live your life thinking that the world revolves around you and that you can always have it your way, that the world isn't as horrible and as disastrous as it is? Or are you going to let things move along and try to change things in your own way? Well, that's a really interesting point. Like, too often, when people hear something they don't like, instead of trying to resolve the problem in a peaceful manner, they go, I don't like what they say. I'm going to A, block them out. B, beat them up. C, center them. Or D, just ignore them, <laughs> right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think I I don't think any of those are good options personally. Like, yeah, it doesn't really solve anything. It doesn't solve anything because for, for it, they're still doing what they're doing. They're still saying what they're saying. And I think, kind of like what you were saying, instead of what culturally what we do is when we don't like what we hear, we block them out. Yep. We go, whatever, you can see that in the news, you can see that all over the place. People go, I don't like what you're saying. I'm going to replace what you're saying with what I want to think. And I think too often, instead of people, like you said, like manning up and owning the problem, they, they run away from it or yeah. they, they try to hide it. So personally for me, when it comes to a, like a sour opinion or a something I don't agree with it's less about the problem and it's more about the person like I'm not it's, no, no, it's no. more no it's, I know what you mean yeah. it's I'm ad not, hominem 
I, it's I'm like you're saying, directly attacking the person, yeah, no, no, not no, what they're that, actually that's saying. That's not what that's not what I'm trying to go for. I, or, it's true though. That that's that's what happens too often today. Yeah. And too often today people go, I don't like what you're saying, you're a terrible person. Shut up, I hate you. Shut up, I hate you. Get goodbye. away from me, kill yourself. And that, yeah. Yeah. I can't tell you how many times I've heard that. Yeah. <laughs> like every day, like, dude. People say that crap all the time and it's like like other people would hear that and they're like, oh my god, I'm gonna tell a, po- a cop. Like that person just told the other person to kill themselves, but it's like no one cares. Like people are straight savage around here if you haven't, if you haven't checked. But like seriously, it's like pathetic because most of that stuff has no actual like directive value in the yeah. conversation or the debate. It's usually like, shut up, I don't like you. <laughs> like it's not ever like your argument's invalid and here's the reasons why. Like that's what our English teachers tell us every day. Like if you're gonna actually say something, make it meaningful. Yeah. You know what I mean? <clears throat> don't directly attack somebody. That's like what I said in the beginning of this conversation. Just don't directly incite violence or attack somebody like meanlessly for something they can't control, like their height, their skin color, their deficiencies. Just shut up, bro. Stop. If you're going, if you don't agree with somebody, don't be a dick. Exactly. There you exactly. Go. Thank, Thank you. you, sir. I appreciate uh, that. <laughs> no, but uh, you mean it. Exactly, Thank you, sir. Uh, exactly, though. See, this is um, why we go to Roberto. Yeah. So. And no, if if you don't agree with somebody, don't be a. D- yeah, yeah. Don't don't be a jerk. Don't be that guy. Instead. A, talk to them, or B, ignore it. On don't, that note, don't don't ignore them because ignoring people isn't the problem. That's the thing. You can have a differing op- opinion with someone and still like have so many and, commonalities. Like and like Tyler and I, for talk. example. Tyler and I, for example. There's a lot of things we don't agree upon. And We're that's, thicker than thieves, bro. That, that's what we. That's why we do this. We do this, this so that we, we can it. talk about problems that's how we became friends dude like yeah. I've, i asked him about like why he was the way he was and then he was like so honest with me and we talked for like six hours and i'm like dude you're like my best friend now like you, if people like don't need to be the same they just need to have the ability to understand each other my best friend started out when we were playing tag and i got tired of tag and i told him no more tag and i pushed him down and then he pushed me down he said i said it got physical price. yeah but that's an exception you know we went and if you guys went to Jefferson, we went to the Story Queen, who's also the therapist. And that got solved Story pretty Queen. quickly. <laughs> We're still friends at a distance, but, you know, it's uh, funny stuff that happens. Well... Because I see that we're probably trailing away from where we were starting. I think that's a perfect way to wrap up this this conversation. I am so glad that you were able to join us, Andrew. Is there anything else that you'd want to say about the topic or anything that you'd want to talk about before we close out the show? Just a small snippet about freedom of religion. Making a club about your religion is totally freedom of expression. Because we have Young Life, FCA, and Muslim Student Association. It's honestly a little unfair, but I'm just glad we don't have one of every religion because that would be so many clubs. Oh my god! You gosh. have a club, right? Or yeah, do you have something coming soon? Yeah, it's 90s club. Oh Ooh, yeah. I run nice. 90s club. That's yeah. super cool. <laughs> yeah, but clubs are a huge part of expression. Like in like music comp club. <laughs> hey, one of the Porter's easiest room. ways that you can, you know, express yourself. Express yourself is by being with other people doing something that you share an interest with. Exactly. And I think a lot of people don't realize how easy it is to make a club. Like we made chess club. It's so easy, uh, dude. Like they, they're so I'm willing part to work of the board with you. games club, and like it's it's as easy as hey, we like, have this idea, we want to do. And this. it's honestly not too much of a commitment to even just like try out a club. Like just put yourself out there, you know. Yeah. Express yourself. On that note, I like to say thank you very much, everybody, for watching. I have been Tyler Overby, Dakota Coddington, Andrew Coviello. Thank you so much for watching Polite Political Discourse. We'll see you next time. Yeah.